Hello, my name is Tony and I'm a second year PhD student at MIT with Professor Luca Carlone. Today, I'm excited to present our newest work on 3D scene understanding. In this work, we present a layered hierarchical representation of 3D scenes for actionable spatial perception. The motivation for this work is basically to enable the long-standing problem of having fully autonomous robots that can achieve tasks given as human commands, such as asking a robot to bring a cup of coffee. So what does a robot need to bring us a cup of coffee? It certainly needs to know where it is first. Therefore, localization is at the base of this pyramid. It also needs to know what is the geometry of the scene it is operating on. The second element is therefore mapping. Finally, it does not suffice to know the geometry. One must also know what is the semantic meaning of this geometry in order to infer where to go next. To achieve this level of 3D scene understanding, we therefore have to provide a robot with a metric semantic localization and mapping algorithm, also known as metric semantic slam. Therefore, previous to this work, we tackled the problem of 3D scene understanding by developing and, op and open sourcing a real-time metric semantic slam pipeline that we named Chimera, which is able to reconstruct the 3D geometry while semantically annotating the scene by just using visual and inertial data, everything while operating in real time. So although the 3D metric semantic reconstruction is uh, featureful, it still remains difficult to make it actionable. In particular, we would like to be able to perform semantically informed path planning queries, such as going to the kitchen, which not only requires to know where the kitchen is, but also if the scene is very large, it requires an abstraction such as a topological map to be able to plan efficiently a collision-free path to that room. Moreover, we want a map that is easily interpret interpretable both for humans and for robots. The 3D semantic mesh is already interpretable by both humans and robots, but as humans, we prefer to reason in terms of higher level abstractions, such as um, buildings, rooms, objects, and so on. Finally, although a 3D mesh is a more compress representation of the scene than a volumetric grid, it is still fairly dense. Therefore, we would like to transmit to new robots entering the scene perhaps just the information corresponding to the rooms adjacent to its position. To achieve these requirements, we proposed a 3D dynamic scene graph that we also refer to as DSG. So what is a 3D dynamic scene graph or DSGs? It is basically a unified representation for actionable spatial perception. A DSG is a tree-like representation that abstracts a dense 3D model, such as a metric semantic mesh, into higher level spatial concepts, for example, objects and agents in layer two, places and structures in layer three, rooms as in layer four, or even buildings in layer five. This representation is compact, modular, scalable, fast to build, and most importantly, actionable, as we will see next. In this work, we used a photorealistic simulator to test our approach. On the top right image, you can see a rendered RGB image of the scene. We also simulated humans in an office space, thereby allowing for dynamic entities, which creates a number of challenges that we explain later. And we also have objects in the scene that we try to detect, reconstruct, and encode in our DSG. So as the first layer of our DSG, we have our 3D metric semantic mesh reconstructed by Chimera. We then built the subsequent layers on top of this dense uh, reconstruction. Let us look into how we represent objects and dynamic agents in the scene, which corresponds to layer two. In layer two, we model objects by their 3D centroid, a bounding box, its semantic label, and its instance ID. To extract objects from the semantically labeled 3D mesh, we first extract all 3D meshes that have a given semantic label, such as a chair, then, using a Euclidean clustering over the 3D meshes, we segment the objects into multiple instances. Once we have the instances, we can then compute its centroid and its bounding box. We distinguish between two types of objects, known, for which we have a 3D CAD model in our database, and unknown, which has no prior 3D model. For the known objects, we fit its model by first extracting 3D key points between the estimated 3D mesh and the CAD model 3D mesh. We then match all 3D key points between the source and target models. 
Of course, this introduces a significant amount of outliers. But by using recent outlier robust 3D registration techniques, we can faithfully register the 3D models. Still in layer two, we also model dynamic agents, such as humans, robots, and so on. For each agent in the scene, we built a 3D pose web, which is a collection of timestamped 3D poses where edges model pairwise relative measurements. A 3D mesh model describing the potentially non-rigid shape over time and a semantic label. We first detect a human by extracting a bounding box of the RGB image from the semantic segmentation. Then we use a graph neural network for, from Professor Costa's group that infers an approximate 3D mesh model. While this approach works well given an approximately clean 2D bounding box of the human, it sometimes returns wrong estimates that we must deal with when tracking humans. For tracking, we build a pose graph with a motion model, such as zero, velo zero velocity model, for example, where we incrementally add a new vertex upon a new human detection. We further avoid the potential outliers from the detection model and also solve the data association problem by developing a joint consistency approach which accepts new measurements only if the joint displacements between 3D mesh models are reasonable given the time between detections. Here we show the results of the human agent tracking module, with in blue the pose graph edges and in a rainbow color according to timestamps the detected humans. Clearly, building a 3D mesh with dynamic elements may introduce artifacts that we must deal with. In our case, dynamic objects both affect the localization and the mapping modules. Therefore, we use an inertial-aided Lucas Canada tracker, which discards feature tracks that do not follow the expected per frame rotational optical flow inferred from the gyroscope, and a two-point grand sack that also uses the IMU rotation to prune outlier correspondences in the feature tracks. On the mapping side, we are able to avoid integrating surface information from dynamic elements by only integrating the depth measurements for the pixels that do not correspond to dynamic objects. After layer two, we built layer three, which contains places and the structure of the scene. First, we define a place as an unoccupied region of the scene where the robot can navigate. Two places are connected by an edge if we can go from one place to the other in a straight path. Therefore, the constructed graph is a topological map and allows for path planning queries. We use the work of Oleynikova to automatically build the topological graph. Then in layer four, we extract the room layout of the scene. We encode the rooms with a 3D pose, a bounding box and a semantic label. Connectivity in the graph represents traversability from one room to the other, meaning there is a door connecting both. We do not need to explicitly detect doors, since the topological graph provides us with sufficient information to infer the way rooms can be traversed, as we will see next. All elements in layer three have an edge to nodes in layer two if they are in the corresponding room. Detecting rooms remains a challenging problem in a general setting. Nevertheless, in our context, we found that a simple technique achieves near perfect results. Our insight is that the Euclidean sine and distance function, which represents for each 3D point in space, its Euclidean distance to the nearest obstacle in the scene, is constant almost everywhere in a 2D slice near the ceiling, where all the values are encoding the distance to the ceiling, except when we get close to a wall where the ESDF decreases to zero meaning it intersects with the wall. Figure A shows the 2D sliced ESDF, while figure B shows the truncating DS, the ESDF gives us a good signal of the room layout. Then, as can be seen in the top right figure, we add a label to its 3D place falling inside an ESDF room and then use the topology of the layer three to propagate the labels to nearby nodes. It then becomes also trivial to connect rooms together and infer the door, door positions by just looking at which edges connect places in different rooms. Finally, we abstract the 3D scene graph using building nodes. In our case, we have a single building node that encompasses all room nodes. Finally, we have our hierarchical 3D scene graph with meaningful connections between different layers that can be exploited for a myriad of, of applications, as we detail in our paper. 